we looked just to, um, at the very beginning of the maturus muscles, in particular, we looked at the axial musculature, F-axial and hypaxial, the abdominal muscles, as divisions of the hypaxial muscles. And then, not very helpful on this guy, but on this guy here, yeah, they're playing music. <laughs> <laughs> um, on this guy here, we looked at um, these muscles in the ventral um, region of the, of the throat under the, the mouth and pharyngeal region. And in particular, we looked at some of the um, brachiomeric muscles here, but then cleared those away to be able to look at the hypobranchial muscles. And remember, the hypobranchial muscles are axial muscles that extend forward under the pharyngeal region. And so I want to start with those today, and we'll kind of march through all the rest of the muscles. Um, the main pair that you see anteriorly here are these ones that run from the inside of the chin, which is called the genion, back to the hyoid. And so those are the geniohyoid muscles. Okay. Again, just named for attachments, so origin, insertion, genion, and hyoid. So those are the geniohyoids. There's also a little very obscure muscle that can be found off to the side, sort of, in this region in here. And you're not going to see it. I'm just going to show you generally where it is. It's a little tiny slip of muscle called the genioglossus that runs up into the tongue. Okay. It's basically coming off to the side of the geniohyoid there, right anteriorly. And genioglossus is really well developed in animals that have tongues. Nycturus, being an aquatic salamander, does not have a well-developed secondary tongue. And so there's just not much to a genioglossus. Another way to put this is that it is extremely unlikely, in fact, I can promise you, it will not happen that you will find a pin in a genioglossus in a nycturus next Monday. Okay. But I just wanted you to know that there is such a thing in them, and it's, we'll see it much better developed when we look at our mammals, which we will hopefully get. Okay. Um, so these muscles, the geniohyoid and genioglossus, are called prehyoid hypobranchial muscles because they run forward from the hyoid apparatus from the base, basohyal region. There's also the posthyoid hypobranchial muscles, which, so I'll move this limb out of the way. Oh, <laughs> I keep that tray there. <laughs> this little, this one here that runs along like this from the region of the pectoral girdle forward to the hyoid, and that's the rectus cervicis. So that's the post-hyoid hypobranchial muscles. And we saw that same muscle in a shark. Um, it was divided up into two parts. The, oh, remember the coracohyoid and the coraco arcuals. The coracomandibular is prehyoid. Coraco arcuals for post -hyoid. Anyway, so that's rectus cervicis in the salamander. And that's it for the hypobranchial muscles of the, of the uh, nectars. Okay. Um, so then we get on to the appendicular muscles, the muscles of the limbs. And fortunately, we have this longo giganto um, nectaris, so you have at least some hope of seeing them. Remember that the limb muscles are just like the fin muscle of the shark, divided into a dorsal group and a ventral group. The dorsal group are involved in this movement. What do we call that? Abduction. Abduction and this movement at the elbow joint, which we call extension, and at the wrist, extension, and the digits, the same thing, extension. So those dorsal muscles are abductors and extensors of the limb joints, and then the ventral muscles do this, which would be adduction, adduction and this, flexion. flexion, and this, flexion. and then this also, which is flexion of the digits. Okay, so the ventral ones are flexors. Okay, so we'll start, since that's how it's listed here, with the flexor muscles, or ventral muscles. And if you look on the chest region of the salamander, you can see a kind of fan-shaped muscle that's originating from the um, hypaxial musculature and running up to insert onto the humerus, and that's this thing here that I'm lifting up. Okay, and this, anyone know? Pectoralis. This is the pectoralis muscle, which literally means breast. 
So that's pectoralis. And then just in front of the pectoralis is another muscle. And this muscle is attached to this cartilage here, which is the ventral part of the pectoral girdle. So what's the cartilage? One here. Coracoid? It's coracoid. Yeah, okay. there you go. It's remember, <laughs> pectoral girdle. There's two basic parts. There's the ventral, for when we're talking about the endochondral part of the pectoral girdle. There's the ventral part, which is the coracoid, and the dorsal part, which is the? Scapula. Scapula. Scapula, yeah. Okay, so this is the coracoid, and there's a muscle that comes from the coracoid and runs over to the limb, and that would be called the? Supra? The coracoidius. Yeah, so that's the supracoracoidius muscle. Okay. And supracoracoidius, we already saw last time in the bird. That was the main muscle. That's the wing elevator or abductor muscle in the bird. Okay. So pectoralis, supracoracoidius. Um, I'm going to skip for the moment the next one, the coracoradialis, because it's small, and show you the two main flexor muscles that you'll see on the underside of the limb, okay? And there's this one here, which is called the humeroantebrachialis that runs along the front side of the limb. Do you see this guy here? This one right here? Right there, that's the humeroantebrachialis. Now, what's the antebrachium? Forearm. Forearm. Forearm, okay, so it's running from the humerus to the forearm. That's and you should really think about when you see these horrible names that seem really long and difficult to pronounce, think about what it's telling you about where they're attached because it really yeah. helps to remember it. Okay, so that's humor antebrachialis. And um, then there's a muscle here posteriorly which is running from the coracoid to um, the brachium or the arm, and that's the coracobrachialis. That's this one right here. Like this, this little guy. And I'm running more along the posterior caudal border of the arm. Okay. If we split those two muscles apart and look deep in between them, you'll see a tendon <coughs> running along of another muscle. And I can kind of spread them apart. And so you can look in there, and you'll see another little muscle right there running along its tendon, and that's the coracoradialis muscle. Mm -hmm. You see that? Hold on a second. There you go. Captured for yeah. posterity? Okay. <laughs> it's way deep in there. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. And that one's which one again? The coracoradialis. All right, so, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. okay, and then the last of these, um, yeah, last of the ventral group of muscles are just the muscles on the ventral surface of the forearm, which we call just as a group the forearm flexors. These are the muscles that flex the wrist and the digits. And that's this whole area right in here. Just in there, those are the forearm flexors. And just remember always, you know, that you've got yourself handy. So if you kind of just imagine yourself as a mud puppy, which is kind of fun to do, think about the underside of your arm, the that are foot on the ground. These are the, what we're talking about, these muscles on the underside. What's going to happen when they contract? They're going to pull this down. They're going to pull the digits like this. They're going to flex the rest of the digits. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're welcome to think about yourself as you're looking at mud puppies and make sense of this. Okay. Um, so those are the ventral muscles. Then we get to the dorsal muscles. And so let's try to run this side. It shows up better there. There's a big, broad sheet of muscle that on a, on a lot of your neck tours that I was looking at last time was a little bit hard to see it seemed like it's sort of these tenuous muscle fibers, but it's this one here. It's kind of a fan-shaped muscle that's coming off the epaxial musculature and running to the humerus, inserting on the humerus. 
And this is the latissimus dorsi muscle, which literally means the broad muscle of the back. And this is a muscle that's also present in mammals. We'll see it in our cats and rabbits. Um, it's the muscle that's really well developed in swimmers because it's a really important muscle for retraction. So if you're swimming the crawl, it gets really big. And if you look at someone like Ryan Lochte and he's got this like big triangular muscle on his back, that's latissimus that you're looking at. Okay. Um, so it's, it's a well developed muscle. Not in me. Um, okay, then the next one on the list is a little bit strange. We'll use this guy because it shows up a lot better here. Because it seems like it's a ventral muscle, but technically it is part of the dorsal or abductor musculature. And it's this one here that's coming from the prochoricoid process and running back to the humerus. And this is called the prochoricohumeralis, this guy here. There's this one right along in there. And this is a nice muscle. I like it a lot because it's really obvious. Like, some of these muscles are admittedly a little tricky to find and obscure, but this one, like, everybody can find easily on the next row. So it would be one that I would feel very comfortable in putting a pin in on it. Practical for just that reason. Okay. Um, and like I said, technically it's a, it's a dorsal muscle, but it's lying ventrally. And that happens with this limb musculature. Okay. Um, I'll come back to this guy for a second. The main extensor muscle we see on the dorsal surface of the arm is the triceps muscle. And that's going to insert onto the ulna and do this to the elbow. What do we call that? The movement? Extension. extension. So it's going to extend the elbow or extend the forearm. And that muscle is this big muscle mass we see right here on the back of the arm. And that is the triceps, brachii, the triceps. Okay. Yeah, it's a nice easy thing to put a pin in, but I feel very good about doing that. It's pretty easy. Um, there is, I think I see it better. Maybe it was on this one. Saw it in the last group, so I know it's there. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. The triceps has three heads to it. That's why it's called the triceps. And I'm not asking you to learn the names of those heads, but you need to know that there's two of them here that you can separate and kind of peek underneath and between them, just like we did for the coracoradialis. And you'll find another muscle here that's coming from the inner side of the coracoid and the scapula and running down to the humerus. And that's called the subcoracoscapularis. Can you see that in there? Yeah? Okay. That's yeah, this little guy right here. Oops. Right in there. See that? Okay. And this is one that also has a homologue in mammals. It's called the subscapularis in mammals. Is that okay? So what's it called again? Subcoracoscapularis. Subcoracoscapularis, excellent. Okay. Um, so, okay. Then just like we had forearm flexors, there's these muscles here that extend the wrist and digit, so these would be called forearm extensors. extensors. Okay, so that's all in here. And then the last muscle of this group is a muscle that's coming from the scapula itself on the side of the animal here, just in front of the latissimus dorsi. It's this muscle 
right there. See that? Okay? <laughs> and this is the scapular deltoid muscle. The um, colorful book, the one by Diulis and Thriller, call it the dorsalis scapulae. That's again a pretty easy one to find and identify. And I think everyone saw it okay. We looked for it last time. All right. Um, so that's it for the limb muscles, the four limb muscles. Hind limb muscles, we're not learning all the individual muscles at all. I just asked you to notice that indeed there is also a dorsal and a ventral group of muscles in the hind limb, just like in the forelimb. I think there's enough with the forelimb. And I like the forelimb muscles better because a lot of the names are uh, <coughs> the same as muscles we'll learn in mammals, and so you can make that connection more easily, whereas the hind limb muscles tend to be really different in salamanders. Okay. Um, cool. Then we get to the branchiomeric muscles. And some of these we already looked at last time. So Remember, branchiomeric muscles are associated with what skeletal elements in general? Splanchocranium, visceral arches, splanchocranium. So we have things like the mandibular arch, the hyoid arch, the branchial arches. And associated with them, there's mandibular arch muscles, hyoid arch muscles, branchial arch muscles. Okay, so we'll go through them um, in order, starting with the mandibular arch. And a mandibular arch muscle that we looked at last time is this one here that runs across from the mandible of one side to the mandible of the other, and that would be the intermandibularis. intermandibularis. And this is one you guys knew well from the shark same muscle, the manipulus. That's intermandibularis. And then the other main mandibular arch muscles are the jaw closing muscles, the adductor mandibuli or levator mandibuli. And that is split into two parts in the nectaris. So there's an inner and anterior part here. It extends a little bit further forward. This is called levator mandibuli anterior, or adductor mandibuli anterior. This one right in here. And then there's a more lateral part here. And this is the levator mandibuli ex externus, oh. which is this guy right here. Okay. Um, so that's it for the mandibular arch muscles. Okay. Then we get to the hyoid arch. And hyoid arch muscles include the interhyoideus, which is really hard to distinguish from intermandibularis, but it's the last more, most caudal part of this sheet of muscle right in here. And you can tell that it's not part of the intermandibularis because it's behind the jaw joint. So it's not connected to the mandible at all. Okay. Um, that would be a little bit hard to pin, but I could maybe manage to in a good situation. That's inner hyoideus there. And then there's another layer that's behind the inner hyoideus that's also part of the hyoid arch musculature. And that's this thin sheet that runs around the throat. Do you remember what this is called? Sphincter coli. Yep, this is the sphincter coli. And that's also a hyoid arch muscle. And then if we flip back the sphincter coli and inner hyoideus intermandibularis, we can see this big muscle running along here, which is coming from the branchial arches down to the base of the hyoid. This would be called the branchiohyoid or branchiohyoidius. That's this one. Big guy. Pretty obvious also. This would be, you know, everyone's going to find this muscle, so you can't really miss it. Okay. That's branchiohyoidius. And I do want to point out that if you look from a lateral view, the sphincter coli runs up and it stops right about there, and it um, branchial hyoideus extends further up. So on a lateral view, you can't actually see branchial hyoideus from the outside without having to peel away any layers dorsally. So that's branchial hyoideus there as well. It goes very far up. Okay. Uh, ah, 
The last one of the hyoid arch muscles is a little bit strange. It's the muscle called the depressor mandibuli. So it, it's a muscle that actually lowers the lower jaw, it opens the mouth, in other words. And the way this works is if you think of the jaw joint as a little pivot like this, and the back end of the lower jaw just sticks out a little bit behind the jaw joint, this muscle pulls up on the back end of the lower jaw and therefore drops the lower jaw down. Okay. There's that little pivot, and it's just pulling up like on the tips of my fingers and making the lower jaw drop. Okay. And so that's the depressor mandibule. And you can imagine, you know, it doesn't take a lot of muscular force to open the mouth compared to closing it and biting on things. So it doesn't have to be really well. <laughs> and that is a muscle that's a little bit tricky to see, but you can see it in here pretty well in the last few, so we'll try again. This is where I found it. Yeah. Is it on this way? Is it one or the other? Is it on the other? Um, yeah. This is a muscle that basically runs along um, underneath and behind the adductor mandibuli. And so to find it, what you have to do is you have to, there we go, strip this way a little bit more, lift up the adductor mandibuli or levator mandibuli externus and look deep to it. And you'll see another muscle right there running along down to the lower jaw, and that's the depressor mandibuli. See that in there? Okay. It's right in there. Okay, so those are the hyoid arch muscles. And then there's the branchial arch muscles. And branchial arch muscles consist of some thin slips that extend over to the tops of the gill arches that come off of the epaxial musculature. And you can see them pretty well here. Do you see these little thin slips of muscle running across to the tops? Of, these are called the levatories arcuum. So they lift up the gill arches. That's what, yeah, that's these guys in here. Okay. Levatories arcuum. Okay. And they're usually pretty visible. And then the last one is a muscle that yeah, it shows up pretty well here. We can see in front of the scapular deltoid. So here's scapular deltoid coming down from the scapula. And then there's a little slip of muscle right in front of it that's coming from the epaxial musculature and attaching to the scapula. And this is the cucularis muscle, which is a muscle we already saw in the shark doing exactly the same thing, coming from the epaxial muscle going to the shoulder girdle. That's this little guy right here in front of the scapular deltoid. Um, and that's it for the muscles of the neck chart. Okay. So I know it seems kind of daunting at first, but it's really not that many muscles. Um, again, so things that are really big and obvious, I would definitely make sure you know them because they're more likely to appear on the practical. I try to find all of them, of course, but, um, but you know, if you miss the triceps, you're going to feel silly. So you really like get those things down. Are you counting on him for that? No, I was poking his tricep. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and we went over the rest of the muscle last time. So um, the other thing I just want to remind you ahead of the practical is if I ask you for an action of a muscle, which I would only do for something that's really clear and obvious like the triceps, what's the action of the triceps? 
extension of what? Extension of the okay, forearm. so extension of the forearm or extension of the elbow joint. You need to say something like that. Don't just say extension. That's not enough. So you need to tell me what's getting extended. But if we said the forearm, that's fine. Yeah. So okay. You're either talking about what limb segment is moving or what joint. Either okay. is done in, well, which depends on how you want to. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so that's it for formal review and the rest.